somebody tonight. Somebody that's in pain and you're wondering why. Somebody that's been going through pain and going through some things that you can't tell everybody. You got to understand that God is forging your character and God is making you. People in the kingdom of God desire and yearn to be products of greatness, but they run from the process. They resist the process. Y'all don't want to have no church with me on tonight. You got to understand that yes, you have a promise, but there is a process before you get to the promise. I'll give you a Bible. God gave the children of Israel a promise. He said, I'm taking you over to a land of milk and honey. Come on here. I'm going to bring you out of not enough and just enough into more than enough. But the path led them into the wilderness. The wilderness is a place of testing. It is a place of hard trials. It is a place of difficulty. It is a place of hardness. That's why Paul said, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And so some of you, you're in the place of the wilderness right now. But baby girl, I came to tell you, you're coming out and you're coming out with the victory. Clap your hands and give God glory in this place. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so you must understand, glory to God, that it is imperative. Everybody say imperative. It's imperative that we understand that God in his magnificent wisdom order our steps down the pathway of affliction. He orders it. For the Bible says the steps of a good man has been ordered by the Lord. Steps mean God said I've set you up. Glory to God, I set this up. I foreordained this. They are perpendicular steps. I'm taking you somewhere. So the Bible says he orders our steps down the pathway of affliction. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Can I build my case? But the Lord. But. But. You need to shout butt in the face of the devil, but. Yeah. Many are the afflictions. Let the righteous shout hallelujah. hallelujah. He said many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord, Adonijah, your master, your ruler, your redeemer, your savior, your way maker, your will in the middle of a will, your what? Go both. The one that got the power to bring you out. He will deliver. Anybody know he'll deliver? Anybody know he's deliverer? Shout hallelujah. So you must understand that he takes us down, amen, the pathway of affliction. Why is that? Because he want to lead us into a greater level of maturity. He want to lead us into another uh, level, amen, of spiritual power. He wants to lead you, amen, to another level of spiritual stability in the kingdom of God. And so here, amen, when we look at the life of David, it is very powerful because we can look at David's life from several perspectives. Today... I want to look at him as a type of a believer. A believer. He represents the believer. He represents you and I. David stands as a spiritual model for us because he was a man who often failed God and he had some issues. But what David had going for him is that David was a worshiper and he was a warrior. 
We got a lot of worshipers, amen, but they are worshipers that are wimps. Y'all don't want to have no church. But he said, I need some worshipers and some warriors. You can praise them on one hand and fight on the other hand. Back up, devil. You're not taking my destiny all the hell I done been through. I don't think so. I don't think so. The Bible says that when Jesus came, he said, the Father seeketh those that will worship. Yes, somebody say, I'm a worshiper. But then to be a warrior, he says, now put on the whole armor of God. Personal responsibility. Ask your neighbor, say, did you get dressed before you left? So David, he teaches us. Amen. That when you have destiny, you can't just be a worshiper. You have to be a warrior. Let the warrior say hallelujah. Say hallelujah.